having succeeded in bringing the issue of immigration to the presidential debate, what's the future of your campaign? Well, to win. <laughs> the fact is that the uh, president of the United States is really going to be the ultimate determinant of what happens in this issue. Bringing the debate forward is one thing. Getting a president of the United States who will actually do something about it is quite another. You can force them into talking about it, which we've done. That's good. I mean, this last debate, I don't know if you saw it, but we spent probably 70% of the time talking mm -hmm. about illegal immigration with at least eight of the people on that stage saying, I <laughs> mean, by golly, I'm going to outdo Tom Tancredo on this issue. It's good. That's fine. I'm happy that, that that's there. But we really do have to sort of make it not just a part of the rhetoric that goes on during a campaign, but try to work it into the actual meat of the campaign. Will the next president of the United States actually enforce the law? This is the question. Because without it, frankly, all the talk in the world and all of the bills that we can pass, every single law that we can pass, every law that I'd introduce, if I had the ability to, to simply you know, pass everything I wanted, would be worthless if the president wouldn't enforce it, as this president chooses not to do. Shifting from that issue to, to some politics for a moment, this week, uh, Rudy Giuliani, John McCain both announced that they're not going to participate in the Iowa straw poll. I heard that. What are your, uh, what are your plans for that event? My plans are to do exactly what we were heading uh, toward, and that is to, to run as hard as we can here in Iowa. And I'm going to actually be able to spend a little more time here than I had anticipated, because Dan Credo on this issue. It's good. That's fine. I'm happy that, that that's there. But we really do have to sort of make it not just a part of the rhetoric that goes on during a campaign, but try to work it into the actual meat of the campaign. Will the next president of the United States actually enforce the law? This is the question. Because without it, frankly, all the talk in the world and all of the bills that we can pass, every single law that we can pass, every law that I'd introduce, if I had the ability to, to simply you know, pass everything I wanted, would be worthless if the president wouldn't enforce it, as this president chooses not to do. Shifting from that issue to, to some politics for a moment, this week, uh, Rudy Giuliani, John McCain both announced that they're not going to participate in the Iowa straw poll. I heard that. What are, your, uh, what are your plans for that event? My plans are to do exactly what we were heading uh, toward, and that is to, to run as hard as we can here in Iowa. And I'm going to actually be able to spend a little more time here than I had anticipated, because um, a few days ago, I announced when this bill looked like it was going to pass the Senate, I announced the formation of something we called Save America, Kill the Bill, and I was going to spend some of my time anyway going out across the country, trying to go into individual members' districts and raise the rabble, if you will, mm -hmm. and get them to, uh, to support our efforts to, to change their um, elected officials' position on the issue if they were against it. Well, it doesn't look like I'm going to have to do that now, and so I am happy to be able to say that I'm going to be here a lot more often, and we intend to go move forward with it into the, into the straw poll. Giuliani's advisors uh, were, you know, have kind of dubbed the, the straw poll a sideshow. He was going to lose. They may even detract, I guess, from, they're saying it will detract from the caucuses, and it takes resources away. What, what do you make of the he criticism was to lose. of the event? He was going to lose. McCain was going to lose. The... Th that's it. You're not going to, they don't want to be in, you know, see, when you're one of the top three, right, when, when you're the, 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 the superstars, mm -hmm. you can't afford to lose the, the, the straw poll. I mean, it, it almost takes you out immediately. You, you, you have to win that one. And uh, I'm in the luxurious position, in a way, <laughs> of not having to win in order to be, in order to make my case. And, uh, but they did. They had to win, and they, they weren't going to, and so they pulled out. I mean, that's as, it's as simple as that, really. I, I know nobody's going to say, they're not, they're, their team isn't going to come in and going to go, you know why we're out of the Iowa straw poll? Yeah, we, just, we weren't going to make it, so we're going to pull out of this. But that's exactly what happened. To be clear, <laughs> and just to recap, you are continuing your presidential campaign full bore. You're running for the presidency, the yes. nomination. Yes. And you're going to compete hard in the straw poll. Are you going to try to organize blocks of people? Are you going to put so you're going to do the best to turn out people you can. Yeah, everything I can. Bill Salier, who is our campaign chairman here in Iowa, is great. And 
um, as, as energetic. If I, probably if I wanted to pull out, I couldn't. <laughs> he wouldn't let me. <laughs> he's, he's a very dynamic guy, and I have no desire to pull out. And there's speculation that you have a couple of ulterior motives in your presidential campaign. One, uh, you've made it very clear from the beginning you want to bring illegal immigration to the fore yeah. as Republicans debate their nominee. And two, there's speculation you want to run for the Senate in Colorado. What do you say to people who say you're using oh. your presidential race as a stalking horse for a couple of other things? Yeah. No, uh, uh, it, there is absolutely no doubt about the fact, and I am quite clear about it. I tell people all the time exactly what I feel and, and what, you know, what actually got me to this point. This, mm -hmm. And that was the illegal immigration issue. It propelled me to the point of, of actually declaring a candidacy. Mm -hmm. But once you declare the candidacy, you really do have to run you're not going to get people to vote for you just because they want to make a statement. You're going to have to say, look, I, I am now running for president, and that means there are a lot of issues we have to talk about, even beyond illegal immigration, but I'm going to move that to the forefront of the campaign. Um, the Senate race in Colorado, I, I really honestly have not, there, well, especially, are you talking about, if you're talking about the one coming up, uh, there, no, there's absolutely no, uh, absolutely no chance that I will run for the Senate. Uh, the Senate seat that's coming up in this next election. Uh, Bob Schaefer's already announced he's a good friend and I will do everything I can to but support Salazar? him. Salazar, well, who knows? As I say, I'm running for President of the United States and let me tell you, it takes a, this is a grueling experience and mm -hmm. when, when you're done with it, who knows whether you ever want to run for anything anymore, but we'll see if that, if that all uh, unfolds in that way, perhaps. But, I have to focus on this issue. I mean, I really can't think about that, and I, it's not a stocking horse. I assure you of this, that, that the reason I'm doing this has nothing to do with the Senate race. That I guarantee you. If you'd step back and assess your rivals for this candidacy, and perhaps lay out a scenario where this gentleman named Tom Tancredo might indeed win the Republican nomination, because if you look at the public opinion polls, there aren't a lot of people who know Tom Tancredo. Right. Well, that's of course true, um, but when you've got a lot of people running for the uh, office in the first place, uh, some strange things can happen. Uh, what if, just what if, you end up with a lot of folks who have a lot of money, spending a lot of time and money gathering support, um, but they don't get enough in terms of the delegates at the end of the day go into a convention with a lock on it. Well, then somebody with fewer delegates can make an interesting mix of things. What if we go into a convention for the first time in 40 years that's a brokered convention? Um, a lot of things can happen.